everybody this is Jen from Garden Jen's Journey. Today I'm going to take you on a walk through my garden and we're going to talk about mint. There's been a lot of discussion in my gardening group about what to do with mints because mints are good for a lot of things but they can be a problem. They can easily overrun a garden if not taken care of properly. So I'm going to show you what I do in my garden, how I grow a mints, the varieties I grow, and kind of explain them a little bit. I'm in no means an expert, but this is how I've been doing it for the past five years, and it seems to work really well for me. So I figured I'd show these uh, items to you to help you be able to decide what to do with mint if you want to grow it in your garden. So let's head out to mine and take you on a tour. So this is my container bed area. Um, this is also where my mint garden is. Um, a lot of people are afraid to put mints in the ground, especially near their main gardens, uh, because mints can be invasive um, just because they, they spread. And if you don't get the uh, whole root out, um, they can still grow. Uh, new shoots later on. Um, so I have three types of mints here in my container bed area. Um, before we had the containers here, this actually um, was my mint garden, specifically where uh, I put my mints so they can just grow here, be happy, and uh, I really don't have to worry about them taking over the main garden. Um, but then we started adding the container beds in here as well um, and since they're in containers up off the ground I don't have to worry about the mints overtaking them so it works so anyways I'm going to take you through here and uh, it's not all neat and tidy and stuff because I have a lot of products I'm working with so uh, just bear with me here this here is chocolate mint it's one of my favorite uh, mints just because it's I like Andy's mints, and if you guys like Andy's mints, this is kind of like what that smells like. Um, it's nice for teas and things like that. Um, it doesn't have a real strong flavor once you uh, start using it, um, but uh, if you crush it and whatever, it does smell really nice. So again, that's the chocolate mint, and you can see it's a really bushy and growing and things. Um, it's doing really well. I've actually had to prune it a little bit because it was getting a little out of hand. Um, but yeah, I just let it grow here and it's, it's happy, happy. Over on this side, this is my peppermint, or it's supposed to be. I planted peppermint here a couple years ago. This year, though, when I crushed the leaves of this uh, peppermint, it's not really smelling like peppermint, so I'm not sure if it's just going through a phase or whatnot. Um, but anyways, so this is my peppermint. I also have some potatoes growing here that um, just grow because I didn't get all the potatoes pulled up last time. But anyway, so yeah, this is peppermint. And then on the other side, I have spearmint over there, and so we'll go over there in just a second. Okay, so this is spearmint, um, and it's taken a couple years for this to really get established. Uh, spearmint can be a little finicky sometimes, but um, yeah, so this is my spearmint. I really, really like this one. It's great for uh, teas. Um, it's great for some uh, different cuisines. Um, we use spearmint instead of peppermint, uh, but you have to kind of research make sure you're using the right mint. Uh, but yeah, and I just uh, pruned this one a little bit and uh, maintained it because it was getting kind of out of hand. It grew over here into where my sunflowers and stuff I usually plant. So um, I just pruned it back, thinned it back, and uh, what I do for it is very, very simple. Um, you just grab the bottom of the, the plant just like you do for weeds or anything and just pull it up out of there and uh, it comes out really really easy uh, but you kind of just have to maintain it it's not a big deal um, you can let them grow wild like I have in most of the garden um, or you can maintain it and keep it kind of compact just by pruning it down and then pulling up the extra shoots where you don't want them 
like I said, this plant had grown all over here. It was a just a big hodgepodge. And if I wasn't growing sunflowers right here, I would have just left it. But because this is where I grow my mammoth sunflowers, or my Mongolian giants, um, I needed to clean this area out um, so they had room to grow without being um, suffocated from the mint. This is another plant that is in the mint family that if not taken care of can easily get out of hand in a garden but it's not that hard to maintain if you just stay up on it. Um, this is lemon balm and just like the spearmint um, I prune it back and then if it's getting too big too you know too far spread I just pull up the branches that I want right up out of the ground and uh, not a big deal. This mint is actually planted in my main garden. This is planted in my medicinal bed patch. So yeah, um, it stays about this size. And again, if I need to, I can just uh, pull some of the extra out and uh, get it compacted again. It's not a big deal. Okay, over here um, is another mint that's growing in my main garden. I believe this is peppermint just by the shape of it. Um, but again, my peppermint seems a little off of flavor and smell this year, so I'm not sure what's going on. But uh, you see this area here. This was all um, that, that plant, it's huge. It's out in the pasture and it's just everywhere right here. But um, I needed to clear this out a bit so my loofah and my flowers and things had room to breathe without being encroached on by the peppermint. So I just pulled out the plant where I did not want it. You see I could have a shoot here and I have a shoot here. I'll need, need to pull back out. Not a big deal. Very easy to pull out and maintain. This is bee balm. And bee balm is also in the mint type family. Um, it can spread, but does not spread as bad as other general mints do. This here is white whorehound. It's a medicinal herb. It's in uh, the mint type category as well. But this one is a very slow growing mint, slow spreading mint. Um, it's been here almost four years now and it's still this size it has not spread very far I wish it did because this is a very important medicinal herb but um, it stays quite compact so not all mints spread like crazy some do some are very slow growers like this one <clears throat> this is one of my tomato beds and it's where uh, there used to be catnip here and um, so it comes back uh, this is uh, we had catnip here and then we moved it a year ago or two years ago sorry and so last year there was nothing here as far as mints but uh, now we got cat mint popping up again there you can see a whole bunch of little sprouts of catnip right there and yeah it's it's just about everywhere in this bed um, but again it's very easy to pull out especially at that stage it's very young so it's very easy to just pull out and dispose of it's not a big deal um, it's just like weeding the rest of your garden you know you gotta get rid of these weeds so you just pull them out not a big deal um, so there's a bigger sprout there um, if my cats don't get to it and eat it first so that's what the mints look like in my garden and how I deal with them. Um, I use them for all sorts of stuff. Um, I'm heavily into herbology, so I use it for a lot of medicinal things. Um, teas, they're nice in a uh, cool iced tea uh, for the summer. Um, they're good for potpourri. Um, you know, mints are just a wonderful thing to have around. Um, don't be scared of them. That is my biggest thing. Don't be scared of growing mints. Um, in the ground. Uh, growing mints in a pot um, is okay. Um, I'll take you to one that's in a pot right now, but they easily outgrow a pot, and I'll show you that in just a second. Okay. <clears throat> okay, so right next to my lemon balm, 
I have a pot of catnip. Um, I had saved this catnip from the cats, especially this one. Um, they had eaten it down to almost completely nothing and almost killed it off. And I use catnip uh, or catnip for different medicinal purposes too. It's a very good plant, so I needed to save it. <laughs> so I had put it in this pot when it was just a little seasoning, um, and it took off and it grew. But as you can see right now, it's not doing very good. It's it's very poor shape right now. And that's because it's actually outgrown this pot in less than six months. Um, yeah, because it's almost August. And I think I put it in the pot in April or May. So just a, a little seedling um, quickly grew and outgrew this pot. So, um, and this is a nice, I think this is a five gallon pot. So um, that's where I caution people who are worried about planting mints in the ground and then they put them in these size pots it doesn't work um, mints get easily root bound and uh, there's just not enough room what I've done before because uh, I have planted in ground and you can see the uh, my other cats going right after it um, is I planted them in the 25 gallon Rubbermaid tubs and that worked uh, for a little while. It lasted me about two years before they got overgrown. Um, but yeah, uh, growing mints in pots is not the best way to go uh, just because they outgrow the pot and they will die. Okay, so now that you've seen my garden and how I deal with the different mint varieties that I grow, I hope that you are able to make a decision on how to plan to grow mint in your garden. Again, don't be afraid to grow mint. It's a great crop. You just have to have the time and patience to maintain it properly and you'll have an excellent crop year after year. So get out there and grow some mint and I hope that wherever you are, you are wonderfully blessed. Have a great day everybody. Bye-bye.